Hello Edwards, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got the uh, the GameMax PC here, which is one of our resident demo PCs um, that I've just built back up with some stuff I had lying around because I really wanted this case rebuilt um, just because it's a really nice demo computer to have lying around and it's really handy to have demo PCs lying around just because now and then you want to test something or just plug something into a different computer, etc, etc. Um, so I built this thing back up with some um, second slash third gen Intel that I had lying around. Uh, I've got a second gen, uh, it's an i5-2400S in there, which obviously is, of you know, just stuff I had laying around. And also this is the, uh, the, the good old 960, um, uh, GTX 960. Um, so yeah, we had this thing rebuilt. And um, initially I post-tested it, it worked, I installed Windows on it. Then I unplugged it. I plugged a different compute, uh, different hard drive into it, um, did some stuff. Then I plugged its hard drive back in, and now it won't post. So I thought I'd take you guys on the journey as I try and figure out what the hell has just gone wrong with this thing. Might be interesting, might not. Let's find out. Um, so if we turn it on, um, we turn it on, and at the moment, the state it's in, most of the time, it will post, and we'll get a post screen. Or we should, there we go, there's the post screen. But it doesn't get any further than this. Um, and if you just sit and leave it, I've just left it on for like an hour, eventually it just goes to a black screen, and then I think eventually the computer just turned off. It was just like, uh, and just turned off, and that was it. Um, so yeah, what do? What's wrong with it? Who knows? Um, so yeah, we're going to start swapping out some parts and find out uh, what's causing this issue, because as I say, it was fine, and now it's not, and I don't know why. Um, so as said, as you can see, it's sitting on the BIOS screen, it does have, uh, no, the hard drive is disconnected at the moment. I unplugged it again just in case. So there's no boot source at all. It should just be going straight to either BIOS or no boot device, either or. If there's nowhere for a computer to start from, it should just either go into setup or it should just go to a screen saying just no operating system found. So yeah, it's going nowhere at the moment. So let's turn it off. It does respond to the power button, which is always a good sign. Um, if you press the power button and nothing happens, if you've actually got to hold the power button down, then that normally implies that it's crashed, whereas at the moment it seems to be that it's waiting for something. But also, like, it doesn't respond to the keyboard either. If I press tab to see the post screen, we won't get anything there either. I also can't get into BIOS. Let's just double check that. Turn it on again. BIOS, tap and delete. This is turned on, isn't it? It is good, yeah. So there's post, but I'm tapping delete and nothing's happening. So yeah, it won't go into BIOS either. So the first thing I'm gonna do is swap out the graphics card because obviously as anyone who recognizes this graphics card will know, this is not a trustworthy graphics card. However, if this card had failed, then I would expect us to have no post because the failure mode of this graphics card is a dead short, so. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that's our issue. Let me grab a screwdriver. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in a different graphics card. This is a, an RX 570 that I have kicking around at the moment, which is the normal graphics card that goes in my demo PCs. Okay, we'll get some power on that. And the other thing as well is, I have also tried doing a BIOS reset on this by uh, taking out the RTC battery. That was the first thing I did last night when I was when I first started having troubles with this thing. But we'll probably try it again for good measure, just in case I flubbed it somehow or something like that. Uh, cool, right, okay. Power on, whoops, I forgot to turn off the power supply at the back, but meh, it'll be fine. Let's see if we get anything from it now. I'm going to try and go into BIOS again because that seems to be a good litmus test for if it's working. I'm getting nothing now. I'm going to turn it off at the back. <gasps> Wait a few seconds and turn it back on again. Right, now we've got absolutely nothing. This is a known good graphics card, so fine. Okay, so I don't think graphics was our issue. I wasn't expecting it to be, but when you have an untrusted graphics card, it's kind of the first thing you've got to check. Right, let's turn it off again. And um, I'm going to take the graphics card back out. And we're just going to strip things back a bit and just check for bad connections. 
Another thing that's that has me partially concerned is I've got a uh, um, I've got a USB two to USB three front header adapter fitted hit down here. I'll take this Wi-Fi card out as well while I'm here, just in case that is interfering. Yeah, so down here, because this motherboard doesn't have front panel USB 3, does it have any USB 3? No, it just doesn't have USB 3. I've got this USB 2 to USB 3 header adapter, so the front USB 3 ports can be hooked up. Um, I've no idea if that actually works or not, so we're just going to take that out for a sec, just to simplify. Uh, we'll disconnect the USB as well. Sys fan, that's fine. Uh, unplug the front panel audio just for good measure and I'm going to unplug the SATA cables for good measure. So this is known as a bare boot where you just disconnect anything that doesn't need to be connected. So now all we have is just the motherboard CPU and RAM and that's basically it. Um, have we got... yeah we do have onboard video on this as well so I'm going to, going to hook it up to the onboard video and see if we're getting th anything from there. Okay, power on at the back. Didn't turn on by itself this time, that's fine. I don't like it when they do that. I also suspect that the second memory slot on this motherboard is faulty because I can't get any memory to work in that. So it might just be that this motherboard is crap. And because it had been turned off for a long period of time, it kind of worked for a bit and now it's just fallen over again. All right, it turned off. Are we power cycling? I think we probably are. Yeah, we're power cycling. I'll always let... Oh, I think we had a kick then. The monitor suddenly said it was going into power saving mode. Hmm. If a computer starts power cycling, I'll always let it go like two or three times just in case it gets it after a couple of attempts. But yeah, no, this is nothing. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's take... Okay, Um. let's take the RAM out. So I haven't specifically tested this RAM, I just have no reason to believe that it doesn't work. I'll put in a different RAM module. I had some DDR3 kicking around. Where's it gone? There we go, here's a two gigabyte module. Let's try you on for size. Oh, I'm gonna grab a beep speaker as well in case we're getting any beep codes. Right, it's power cycling again. And I'm going to unplug the hard drive so that stops initialising. Oh, it was. It's the hard drive. No. We've got to beat that time with the hard drive disconnected. Nope, still cycling. Okay, I'm going to turn it off again. Uh, and I'm going to go for another BIOS reset. So we're going to pop the BIOS battery out. Right, while that BIOS battery is out, I'm just going to double check the wiring at the back of the computer just in case something's been punking me. So while I was fumbling there, I pulled out the power cable from the hard drive here. Um, so there's that. We should probably, yeah, let's disconnect the case fan and RGB as well, just to be sure. Cool, so that that's now empty. There's nothing plugged in there. Let's tuck all of this in the back. 
That's all disconnected. Yeah, okay, that's all disconnected. Okay, let's try plugging our battery back in. Still power cycles, all right. Yeah, okay, we'll give it one more, then uh, CPU cooler's coming off. Right, I'm just going to pop the CPU out and put it back in again, just to make sure it's settled. Check for anything in the CPU socket while I'm here. And there's nothing in the CPU socket. And as you can see from the movement of the light on the pins there, all the pins are lined up. There's no bent pins. You can see a really uniform shine on those pins. So that socket is all happy as well. Put you back in. There we go. This uh, Arctic Freezer 7 is my favorite test cooler because um, um, I don't, with the mounting hardware removed, you can just perch it on top of chips. So I can just sit him on top of there. And now I know that there is just a block of metal sitting on top of that CPU for testing. Okay, right, let's try it again. Power on. So we're gonna see this fan spin um, rather than the uh, the freezer because I haven't plugged the freezer in. But that doesn't matter, we literally just need to see a post. Still nothing. Okay. So it wasn't the CPU seated badly. Uh, am I going to have to get another power supply? We should be checking the power supply at this point. Like I've jumped straight to CPU, but really should have plugged in a different power supply by now. Going to try a different CPU super quick, because just I really can't imagine that this will be a power supply issue. And because I have a spare CPU literally in arm's reach. So this is an i3-3220 which is also compatible. It's the original chip that was in this motherboard before I started messing it about. Power on. Cooling. Okay, there's something. There is some display output. Did it power cycle again? Yeah, it did. What the hell? It has been trying to put something out on the screen now and then, but because it's just, I think, just been some black, some weird lines in the top left, I haven't been spotting it. Okay. Uh, I think this is motherboard issue at the moment. So um, we're going to try a different power supply. Then we're going to take the motherboard out and we're going to go to bench top. And we're going to start diagnosing the motherboard. Um, but yeah, let's try another power supply just for posterity, just because, yeah. The thing that you, th you know, whenever you say, oh, it's not going to be this, I trust this. Just try another one anyway. It doesn't cost anything. Oh, we've got to take the water cooler out. Ugh, fine. Okay, all reliable is plugged in. Power at the back. Hit it. This Freezer 7 makes it quite easy to see changes in fan speed. Um, and it's always a good sign that a motherboard is actually going to post if you if the CPU fan adjusts down to thermal management. At the moment, it's just... Oh, it beeps. There we go. Okay. 
And again, we've got that garbled line at the top of the screen. And then it cuts off. What did that mean? It's not a happy chappy, this thing. Um, I'm going to try going on to... Um, ah. I'm going to try uh, switching back to the original memory. Just for double blind testing. And then after that, yeah, this motherboard is coming out. It looks like this. This looks to all the world to be a bad motherboard, which is probably why this com the computer that I got this motherboard from was um, being trashed. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was still good, but it looks like we found out why that computer got retired. Let's we'll see if we can do anything about it. Part of me wants to try it with the graphics card in again, just in case it's just having difficulty with the onboard video. I think I'm just making excuses now, though. Okay, there we go. It posted again. And once again, we've just got the weird garble in the top left. And then it cut out. Um, fine. One last try with the graphics card. Not expecting anything from this, but... It keeps trying. Like right now, the fans have gone down to thermal management, so I'm expecting the beep, but we're not getting a beep and we're not getting any display output. Yeah, screw this, let's pull the board out and try it on the bench. Okay, quick look at the bottom of the board while I'm here, just to check for anything horrifying, which I'm not seeing. There almost never is anything visibly wrong with a motherboard that's broken, but I always look because you never know. If you turn the board over and there's a big old scorch mark on it, then you've found your problem. And it takes just a moment to have a look. Okay, we're just going to plug this in and we're just going to spin it up again and just see if it works now it's out of the case. Okay, here's our basic bench setup. Let's try and see what happens. So I'm going to turn it on just by grabbing a metal prying tool and just shorting the power on button jumper. The power on button is literally just a turn on signal and when you short that to ground it just activates the motherboard. Right, so it looks like we're in exactly the same boat still with a power cycle. Okay, second attempt, we've got a beep. And we've still got that garbled display. Okay, um, I'm going to grab another graphics card. This is this one time it'll be one that doesn't need a uh, six pin power connector. Just, just because I can. Ugh. The fastest way to diagnose things is just to throw parts at it until it works. This is obviously not a luxury that everyone has, but I do have this luxury, so I will exercise it. We've no reason to believe that it's there's graphics involved in this problem right now. However, whatever, we're trying it. Oh, switch, power. So what's going through in my mind at the moment is that it looks like we've got a bad motherboard and I'm kind of tempted to get out my BIOS programmer and reflash the BIOS chips on it. Um, just to see if maybe it's a corrupted BIOS or something like that. This is a Gigabyte motherboard. It's supposed to have dual BIOS. However, um, we have seen in the past that Gigabyte's dual BIOS, unless you have a physical switch allowing you to select the BIOS, just doesn't seem to be worth anything um, because of the way the BIOS switching works. Okay, we've got a beep, a solid blue screen. What the hell? And then it turned off again. Sure, 
Okay, it's cycling. Let's give it one more spin and just see what happens. I think I'm wasting my time here. This isn't a good computer that we're trying to save. It's a grotty old Intel board that I pulled out of a wreck of a computer and was just like, I'm going to put the Game Max build back together with this. And I think, um, I think I'm wasting my time and the Game Max is going to have to go back in a box until I get another micro board. Beat blue screen. I don't know what the hell that blue screen is all about. I've no idea how to interpret that. Okay, we're turning it off. Fine. So, um, ah. So, yeah, bad motherboard seems to be a surefire thing right now. Both our CPUs are known goods. We've tried different memory, we've tried different power supplies, we've tried a BIOS reset. So, um, yeah, let's try and flash the BIOSes because why the hell not? I'll get some parts out and we'll set up for that. So for those of you who haven't seen this device before, I've only featured it in one video so far. Um, however, this is an EEPROM flasher. It's a USB EEPROM flasher. So it's got a USB port on the side and you can connect up um, EEPROMs or BIOS chips because a BIOS chip is basically an EEPROM. So that's a uh, electronically erasable programmable read-only memory. Yeah, there we go. I've got there in the end. Uh, so it's basically, a, it's essentially a small flash chip. Um, and what this thing can do is this allows me to read, write, and erase those EEPROMs from some software on my computer. And I can connect those EEPROMs by, um, I can connect to the chip directly with this clamp here, which plugs into the top of it like so. Um, or uh, I can use, I can take a surface mount EEPROM, put it into this little widget here, which grabs hold of it, and then gives me a pin output, which I can plug into here. Uh, or failing that, um, if it's a really old EEPROM and it's socketed, so it's a dip with lots of prongs sticking down, you can put those directly into the socket like that. So now we're going to get this thing hooked up and I'll open the software so we can have a look and see what state the actual BIOS chip is in. Okay, I've got my um, uh, I've got my EZP twenty nineteen programmer connected up. However, it's not detecting the chip. I've had problems trying to use the clamp before, so I'm just going to desolder the chip. This should work. However, I have not, as I say, I don't seem to be having much luck with this crocodile clip jobby. No matter how carefully I try and position it on the chip. So yeah, because for me, desoldering um, the chip from the motherboard is no big deal at all. I'm just going to desolder it. So uh, let's swap that out. Okay, let's try our luck now. So we've got our Winbond uh, 25Q32 chip here. Test. Uh, not connected. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's definitely detecting the device. Let's just try read. Okay, it says it's reading. So it looks like my clamp probably would have worked. I just needed to unplug and replug the the uh, programmer and just try it again. Fine, read complete, and we've got data. Cool. Okay. Right. So what we're going to do? We're going to save that dump. Now we've got to find an updated BIOS and flash that back and see if that fixes it. So, uh, GA H sixty one M. Uh, S2PV, S2PV. FID, beta BIOS. Ooh, no thanks. Uh, let's go with just FH, I think. 
Last updated 2013. Oof. Oh, it's downloading an EXE. Why is it an EXE? That better be a self-extractor. It's a self-extractor. Okay, you're forgiven. So the file name was h61ms2pv.fh. Open. So we've loaded up that BIOS. And now we're going to go for an erase program and verify. So let's just run auto. OK, we are erasing flash. OK, auto was complete. Fine, let's stick it back on the board and try it out. Okay, let's spin it up. Power on at the power supply. Turn on. It beeped straight away. Ooh, okay. That's more than we got last time. <clears throat> it's still scrambled. Uh, can I select? I don't seem to be able to do anything with this. Uh, let's just try press enter. Okay, it responded to enter. Okay, and then it restarted. Yeah, we've still got scrambled output. No bootable device detected. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Um. I don't know if this has helped or not. It seems to have done a proper BIOS reset. And we can actually get into BIOS just with a scrambled display. Okay, I'm going to turn it off and we're going to try it with a graphics card. If the onboard video is screwed and we just need to use a graphics card, that's no problem. I don't care about the onboard video. Onboard video is good for diagnostics, that's basically it. Or I suppose if it's an office box, you know. It seems to be starting a lot easier this time. It beeps straight away. Just still no clean display output. Uh, I might try a different graphics card just because we haven't seen this card work. Um, yeah, let's swap the graphics card. If this doesn't work, we'll swap the CPU. However, it is it's posting straight away, whereas previously it was needing to like power cycle a couple of times before it would give us any display output. So I feel like we're making progress here. Which is kind of interesting, because that uh, that BIOS flash was a real shot in the dark. I wasn't seriously expecting that to do anything. I was just going, well, hey, you know, it seems to be struggling to post, so let's reflash the BIOS. I'll be very happy if that was actually the solution. Yeah, again. Oh, have we got it? Uh, no, we haven't. I might hook up a... Um, Let's see if we can boot from something. Let's try giving it a Windows 10 flash drive and an SSD, and we'll see if we can get into the Windows setup. Because if it's just screwy in BIOS setup, then fine. That's not exactly a fix, but I don't know. You know, like I'll take a half fix. Right, that's a, an SSD connected and a Windows 10 flash drive. Power up. Let's see what it does. I noticed that the post screen has changed as well. I'll tell you what this looks like now though. This looks like the original problem that I had where it was sitting on the post screen without actually booting from anything. No, it's starting from something. Sure. 
and we've got clean output as well. Okay. Next question. Uh, what happens if I remove the graphics card and try and do this on the onboard video? One of the things that I have doubts about is that because we still have that slightly scrambled look, it seems to me like um, I don't it, I don't know if it was a corrupted BIOS or not, but by reflashing the BIOS chip, we just seem to have disturbed it enough that it's actually getting somewhere. So it's kind of hard to tell if that BIOS flash was actually the answer or if it was just enough of a sledgehammer to the side to actually get it to run. Well, no, because the post behavior has changed completely. And also, you know, like you could argue who cares whether it was the right thing to do or not. It actually, it, it worked, you know, so. Cool, okay, we got back to Windows setup again. Uh, I'm gonna restart it and see if I can get into BIOS. Yeah, BIOS is still not happy at all. However, again, before we did the BIOS flash, we were getting this slightly garbled screen, but then it was just cutting out. So we have actually achieved a fix. Interesting. And I had tried resetting the BIOS with the... Um, I mean, we didn't use the BIOS reset jumper, but the um, taking out the CMOS battery has always worked for me in the past. Can we do anything with like BIOS features here? No, it's really screwy. Ugh. Yeah, the only other thing I would like to do is to reflash the backup BIOS as well. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to hook up the, I'm going to hook up the clamp one more time and just see if I can do anything with that. And um, past that, this is obviously not a fix. Um, I don't want to say that this is an absolute 100% fixed motherboard, but on account that we've gone from a system that did not post to a computer that now boots into Windows setup, um, yeah, uh, this is good enough for a demo PC as far as I'm concerned. You know, again, it's an old motherboard. I don't care about perfection here. Yeah, okay. Um, let's have a look at the backup BIOS chip just as a curiosity. Um, then I think we'll wrap up. Side note, I've just switched out to the i5 again, so I've put the i5-2500S back on the board. No change at all, so the CPU has nothing to do with this garbled display output. Ah, the clamp won't get around the uh, the memory slot. It's not, it's just a little bit too wide and won't fit on properly, and a bad connection is no bueno. So we're going to have to desolder it anyway, which again is fine with me, but yeah. Uh, the reason why I'm kind of making a big deal about the clamp is I've had some comments on the uh, original video where I demonstrated the use of this um, uh, BIOS programmer of people going, oh, why didn't you use the clamp? Surely it's much better than desoldering the chip. And uh, I absolutely agree. Um, the clamp wouldn't be much easier. However, as you can see, it seems to have its own quirfles. So, yeah, if you've got no issue with soldering, just desolder it. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove both the chips and I'm going to reflash them both again and swap them over in case our main BIOS chip is screwed. Okay, we're all set up with the backup BIOS chip. I've just put a black stripe with a Sharpie on the main BIOS chip so I don't lose track of which one is which. So I'm going to run this one through manually. So first I'm going to do a read on it just to confirm that the chip works. Read flash. Then I'm just going to step through it manually. Just erase, write, verify um, just to make sure. Because the last time I hit auto and walked away. And when I came back it said it was done. And I trust it because we've used this thing before. But yeah, that slightly bothers me. So I'm going to go through it step by step. Just so in my own mind I know that I've gone through all of the steps particularly the erase process, because um, if you get a nice clean erase, and if you do an erase and then a read and you see a blank chip, you just know in your mind that the old data has actually been expunged, you know. Cool, so it read successfully. Let's erase it. Okay, so that erase was suspiciously quick. Let's do another read. 
That's exactly what concerned me about the auto from last time. It just seemed to not take very long. But maybe erasing is really quick. Who knows? This is only like the third time I've used this thing. So, you know. Read complete. The chip is empty. Cool. Okay. Right, so I'll open the uh, updated ROM again. Cool, so here's the updated ROM, and just for posterity, if I scroll down, as you can see, there's data there. The top part is often empty and just has header stuff in it, so that's not uncommon. Okay, right. We are writing back to the chip. So I'm going to write it, then I'm going to verify it, um, and then I'll do the same thing to the main BIOS chip again, just for posterity. And then we're going to put them both back on the board, but we're going to put the backup BIOS chip on the main footprint. So that way, if the original main BIOS chip is damaged, then that one's just been moved to the backup spot. Because even if it's still damaged, if it's enough to start the board, then that means it's arguably still useful as a backup BIOS chip. Also, if my memory serves me, uh, these Gigabyte boards that have um, dual BIOS, they do need both chips to be present. I seem to remember that back when I was messing around with the B450 Aorus M, I did actually put it to the test and the board would not start with one of the BIOSes missing, it, like the backup BIOS missing. It needed both of the chips to be present. All right, write complete, verify. Right, verify complete. That's done. Okay, same thing to the main chip. Okay, power on. So, hopefully, we might get an uncorrupted BIOS this time. Looks like we've got a post straight away. There's the beep. No. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, so swapping the chip, reflashing and swapping the chips has not fixed it. However, uh, yeah, again, if I um, if I boot back off of that Windows 10 flash drive, um, it will start. Um, there's not a doubt in my mind. We had a clean picture from it. It just seems to be when the BIOS is outputting a picture that we're getting that scramble. Uh, yeah, um, that's about it. Okay, I'm going to build the computer back up again, just so you can see the computer up and running and see it start. Um, and I think that'll do for now, because as I say... While this isn't this is an imperfect fix, but it's a fix nonetheless. I, we had a computer that did not start. Now we have a computer that will start. So yeah, um, you don't always get one hundred percent fixes. Sometimes you get what I call a make good, where you haven't fully fixed it, but you've got something that's functional, and that's a lot better than something that isn't functional. So yeah, uh, I'm going to rebuild. Okay, the rebuilding is complete. Let's get it all hooked up and see if it was all worth it. So we're going everything here. Original graphics card is in. Keyboard and mouse, power, power at the back. And um, although there is a hard drive in this thing with Windows installed on it, I have, since I assembled this thing, I've got a spare SSD to put in it now. So um, I've stuck a old 240 gig SSD in there and we're gonna try and install Windows on it. So, power on, fans, lights, and action. I don't have a beep speaker hook up, hooked up to it now because I only use those during diagnostics. However, I can see we have already sorted it out. And interestingly, we're actually getting a clean picture for the BIOS reset. Can we go into BIOS? Uh, 
I don't know what sorted that out, but I will take it. Whew. Is that just because we changed graphics cards again? Because we didn't try the 960 previously. Who knows? Either way, I am absolutely happy with that. So the only thing I care about now, yeah, I want to make sure that the SATA mode is in AHCI, because this is an older motherboard, so it might not be AHCI by default. Uh, other than that, the rest of that can stay standard. I don't really care. Cool. There we go. Right, so conclusions. Um, so what do I want the takeaway from this video to be? Because it was a little bit of a winding video um, with no real direction. But I think the main the main takeaway from this is what we had in this video, what we had at the start of this video is what seemed to be a very clear-cut case of a dead motherboard. Um, and what we have done is whether um, whether it was a corrupted BIOS or not, I'm not sure. But reflashing the BIOS manually with my programmer seems to be what shook it out of its reverie and put us into a state of a working computer again. So the important thing to remember is that the moment you think you have a dead component, it's actually worth considering what if that component is actually fixable. So fixing motherboards and like fixing graphics cards, this is something that I have merely dabbled in so far, but it's also something that I really want to get into on this channel. So, so thank you very much for watching everyone. I'm going to go ahead and install Windows on this thing again, and it appears that it's going to be absolutely fine. I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye for now.